Oh, as I said, Saturday after the game, and uh, unfortunately, it's it's kind of a uh, repeated uh, topic. It feels like is the our kids are playing really hard, and um, pleased to see that, and uh, proud of them for that, and and they played well for the majority of the game Saturday, and. Um, but we've got to figure out how to finish. And that, that uh, when you're playing a top 20 team, which I think Missouri is, they're, they're solid, uh, very solid. And um, you, you can't have lapses or, or bad calls or bad execution at critical moments. And um, we've played two what, top 20 teams in the last three weeks, or at least they were ranked that at the time. And have had the lead in the fourth quarter. And, and um, and not able to finish is incredibly disappointing and frustrating, uh, for sure. I've never had a season um, in, I guess it's my 32nd season, counting high school. Um, just have never had, have only had one regular season losing record. And um, gosh, this is, uh, seems like that every winnable game has um, not gone our way, not not a single one. That um, and you know, obviously, there's. I hate the result for the players and our incredible fans and administration and you guys that cover us. And um, you know, I, I hate it. it. It makes you sick, physically ill, um, when you don't get across the finish line, and it makes you act crazy and say crazy things to those you love sometimes and um it's just uh it's frustrating and it's um and the the great thing about it is man it it teaches you so much about who you are in the valley um and teaches you perspective of of really keeping your eyes on the right things and the challenging moments which for for me is uh, the impact that uh, the chance I have to impact um, this building um, by what they see um, and how I handle um, the challenging times and I haven't had a ton of practice at that in um, in 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 throughout the the years and so I'm having to learn uh, about myself and seek great counsel and obviously stay grounded in my faith and. And uh, what I know to be true and and pure and good, and um, and uh, hopefully keep this building continuing to work like they are and playing as hard as they do. I mean, our, uh, we have a young team, and they're learning and they're growing. And but I do think we still play uh, not to lose um, instead of man, let's play to win. And truthfully, we probably are coaching that way some too. Um, I feel uh, the pressure of of uh, of those calls of of not being free to to do what I've done for years and and, and oh man we could screw this up or we could not not uh, execute this correctly and um so those are all feelings that are real and legitimate and probably have an effect on on us not finishing games really well when you watch that game um you know, it, you look at three different drives to me, but we have a really good drive in the third quarter, and truthfully, it's a touchdown. And, I mean, the game's over, and we have to make that play. And it hits him right in the hands. It's a perfect throw, and I'm not beating up Robert. He's one of our greatest kids on our team, and nobody hurt. He sent a text out to us on the on the bus to the team that it would break your heart, you know? I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, that's on me. And um, obviously there's a lot of other plays, but you make that play or you make that field goal or, or you make a different call as a coach at a, at a different time. But uh, the game could have easily been over. Defensively, I thought we played probably our most complete game outside the 78-yard uh, completion where we had rack coverage called and it should just n never be, I mean, we're just young, but we're, we're, we're right there, you know, and um, it's a great call by DJ and them, and, uh, but yet they made a play. They, they had a good quarterback, a good receiver, and he made a play, and 
It gave them a, a, an explosive run that gave them their first score to get back in it. And, and you've got to give Brady credit for coming back and extending plays with his legs, which really hurt us. But um, And then the – uh, that drive right before the third on the, on offense, and then the drive after we stopped them, after we pinned it, our punt team pinned it on what the one or whatever, we get it back in a short field, and then that's our chance to put the game away. And we have a negative run on first down, and you know we just didn't execute it. And you're giving it to your best guy and on his own play, and you, know, you got to give them credit. Their defensive front is good, but we didn't execute it very well either. And um, then we miss uh, Rivaldo on a, on, a, on a wide open. He had a little pressure on him. We didn't protect extremely well on that play. But, boy, if we could make that throw, that's a game changer. And then um, I think throws a little high for Sam on the third down play, which I think he was going to run for a first there. And we just don't make any of them. And then, obviously, they, they have an 18-play drive to win the game, and we were absolutely gassed. And um, DBs, the young ones who had played pretty well at keeping everything in front of them most of the game, um, man, they got tired in that. And your technique went from, um, like, watching it yesterday with the defensive staff, it's just, you know, the same call was executed three times perfectly in, in the first half. And my alignment that's supposed to be just outside tip or just inside tip, all of a sudden in this 18-play drive with the game on the line, everything changed in the way we went about technique and playing it. And we did get gassed, too, up front and, and couldn't get any pressure. And, and so that's really the game in a nutshell in, in my eyes. And... Um, yeah, it's just frustrating. I've said it before. I remain confident in the uh, in the staff and and our players, and just continue to trust the process of what we're becoming through the uh, challenging times. And uh, hopefully, the results will start to show sooner than than later. I know they're coming, and um, and no one wants to see the Auburn family and our players get to enjoy that uh, more than myself. Hey Hugh, I don't think we've really asked you about um, play calling. How, how have you? How do you feel like it's been adjusting back into play calling a lot more on Saturdays and then during the week? Do you feel like you're as involved as you need to be and still obviously doing everything that you've got to do as as the head coach? Yeah, it's as a challenge, you know. Like um, uh, this morning, you know, we're trying to get to the basis of uh, the Kentucky plan in and. Um, got a stream of players that I want to see and spend time with. And, and so that's been in and out, and I've been in and out. And, um, but I'm pretty clear with the, the guys what I think uh, we're, we're, that we can do. And I think we're all in agreement and alignment on that. Uh, the play calling part has been um, – um, obviously, Nick's does some of it. Kent does some of it. But I've, I've, I've for sure had, had my share of it. Um, has been uh, – it's, it's uh, four hours of stress. It's, it's four hours of, um, of, man, feeling like you have to have the perfect call for us right now. Um, that We don't have a lot of erasers. We don't have a lot of um, – um, we just don't have a lot of the margin for error. It is, is, seems so small, and maybe that's the feeling that has you feeling uh, like, I mean, I've just, we've got to get this, you know. Like I wanted to, when we got that ball, to take a shot. And shoot, five years ago I'd have done that and, and not worried. Um, but then you're second and ten, and you're like, ah, we didn't give it to 27, and we should have. And... But then we give it to 27, and we, we don't execute it exactly right, and there in made a great play, and you're in second 12. But it's, uh, it's a challenge to recruit, to recruit your current roster, to help work on the offensive game plan. Thank God I've got uh, guys I trust on the defensive side because if I had to do anything more over there, it definitely wouldn't be enough uh, time in the day and then you you, you um, I mean this profession has gotten to where you know you feel like you're uh, 
you know, lifting weights and, and there's an, uh, an added 45 dumbbell like every other day possibly with something else, whether it's uh, the transfer world or, the, or an academic or a discipline issue or um, a family issue that a kid's having. And, and when you're a relational staff like we are, you know, they, they feel the comfort level to I mean, let me go see Coach Freeze. And so that is a, it is a lot. But uh, I enjoy being a part of, of of trying to figure out how to get this uh, this offense, uh, along with Coach Nix, Coach Austin, Coach Davis, uh, and Coach Thornton, and all of the guys that are in there, our analyst crew, um, to be efficient and and um, to find a way to put games away. And really felt like we had one of our better drives of the year that that end of the third quarter and. You know, just got to finish that drive, and it's probably the game probably is over. After the first series, we saw D Wade at left tackle the whole rest of the way. Do you expect that to be the case moving forward? Yeah, we're gonna we'll we'll continue to look at that this week. Um, the movement stuff that um, has started to happen against us because we're we were we were really good at getting into correct runs against fronts for, for several games. So everybody's trying to do pattern what others have done. And um, we uh, had a couple, well, you know, Percy struggled with it in all reality. And um, first play of the game, we should have a completion for a, I don't know, I don't know what, Dre would have caught it and tight turned and, you know, I don't know, 10 yards, let's say. Um, and uh, we just totally, the movement um, messed up person. He just totally uh, kind of didn't block anyone. <laughs> and the guy sacked us. And, um, and I love Percy. And we're going to continue to work with him. Uh, the movement is just it's giving him some problems. And we just didn't, uh, we felt like we, we would be a little more uh, sound um, with, with the other crew in there if that was going to be their game plan. Uh, Coach, you, you you talked about after the game they were able to take the RPO game away from you. Um, you know, can you in your words describe how they were able to do that, and then and what's your pivot? You know, when when teams try to do the same thing to you in the future. Well, I mean, the the box is a good box to run against, so you hand it off, and um, you know, I don't know what our average rush was. I can't remember, but it was uh, pretty solid. Um, so that, that is the answer. I had a feeling, you know, they were going, you know, window those safeties pretty deep and play some outside tip coverage on our, our single guy to the boundary. And um, But, again, they can't do that and still have you outnumbered in the box. And um, so I thought we we were pretty effective at uh, at running it most of the day. They had some good uh, plug deals with their backers that caused us problems in the second half some. Uh, but they definitely were not going to let us uh, sit there and, uh, and throw RPOs for sure. So you got to be able to run the football. Yes, you, um, you talked about wanting to get Jarquez more touches. You did almost 50% more uh, than his average. But his production went down. When you dig into it, what, why was that the case? Well, they're pretty dang good, you know. That that that's a very mature defensive front, and um, you know I think they're really really s solid. And outside the uh, the one game of uh, the A and M game, I mean their stats are shoot uh, their top what three or four in like everything. So it's a really good defense that uh, not many people have just shredded. So. Um, yeah, could we have blocked things a little differently and, and better? Sure. But they're, they're teaching their guys to get off blocks also. But I thought he ran it effective enough um, for us to be balanced and, um, and obviously to have a chance to win the game. You were saying earlier, I was intrigued about the uh, our, our team is not playing to win. They're, they're playing not to lose, and that maybe some of the – there's coaching involved in that as well. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. I mean, because I think of you guys as like being cutthroat on the on the headsets, just going for the kill all the time, and yeah. is that not how it really is? Yeah, it's it's how you want it to be. Um, you know, you, you want to feel that way all the time, and 
Um, but you want to have the confidence and certainly want to do what's right for your current team to, to give them the best chance to win. And, you know, it's just like I was saying on the, uh, to Justin while ago on the very last possession that we had, um, I really wanted on the first play to, to take a shot and I mean, and go for the kill. I really did. And I really think it was a good, good play and a good call. Um, you also just had a defense that stoned them on three and out inside the five yard line. And, um, and you know, we haven't always taken care of the ball um, or protected when, 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 I, when I feel free and loose and all the time. So all of those things are in your mind. And uh, so, you know, I obviously reverted to giving it to our best, best player in 27 and, um, and then ended up having to punt and, and putting on our defense again, which I didn't mind doing at that point because they were playing so well. Um, but, you know, Brady Cook did a great job of extending plays. The penalty hurt, hurt us. Um, also, we had a misalignment by a freshman corner on third and 10 that really hurt in that last drive. But, um, yeah, it's just – you know, I, I I don't know. I didn't didn't feel like, uh, and that could be just all my emotions and feelings too that that we're not playing to win from from the thoughts I have in my mind. It may not even be in our kids' minds. Who knows? I'll talk to them today in the team meeting about that and get some honest feedback. But um, there's there's no question that uh, you you feel the pressure of that those moments of. All right, do do I just be free and free and loose like uh, most of my life um, in coaching has been? Or, man, we're so desperate to – our kids deserve to win one of these games. Don't do anything that's going to put them in jeopardy of, of doing that. Second row. Hugh, the – on Saturday, you guys ran some different stuff like the the pit, that full house pistol set, some of the some of the direct snaps. That you guys also ran some different stuff against Georgia too. Do you feel like the guys are doing a good job of like picking up some of that new stuff, some of those tweaks that y'all are doing? Or you know, yes you know, and no, good? yes and no. Um, I mean, some of those were explosive runs, so you know those are good things. Um, and then there was probably a couple that we didn't have a complete understanding of if they gave you a, this certain look. Um, so I think the answer is yes and no. I mean, I, it's not like, I mean, in our system, that 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 three back stuff, truthfully, the line doesn't have a clue that it's any different. So it's not like they should screw that up. I mean, so I don't think that, that stuff's an issue at all. Um, you know, it's probably when you're, you're having a new formation or a new motion or something like that that may be a little much. But I, I didn't think any of the – all the new stuff that we kind of put in seemed to be pretty successful. Uh, Towns has struggled the last few ball games. How, how close is Alex uh, for – for you to yeah, um, we were uh, – should we have another opportunity within the 35-yard uh, range, we were going to we were gonna give Alex that shot. He felt like he – he told me he felt like he could do that. So um, we're, we're, we're close to thinking on that. We'll see how the week goes. Again, we're excited about Towns and his future and his talent. Um, but, you know, we, we need to make those. Those are critical moments that keep our momentum up and – um, us feeling good and us feeling like, man, we're finding ways to win the game. And um, so, um, but he, he did feel like he could uh, he could have participated if we had that situation again Saturday. Kentucky's been pretty up and down this season, but the defense has been one of the best in the conference. What have you seen from them? And I mean, what are the biggest challenges you think that unit's going to bring to you guys on Saturday? Yeah, um, first, uh, Coach Stoops, I think, is one of the, the best in the business. I think he gets more out of uh, his his teams year in, year out than, than most coaches do. And so give him a lot of credit and uh, like him as an individual and, and does a great job coaching. But... Uh, this defensive front, it starts there, and they're they're the real deal. I mean, zero's a, probably a top 15 pick 
in the draft. Eight's pretty dang salty too. The backers are really, really talented. They can run in the secondary. It's it's uh, one of the better defenses we've seen. You talked about some mistakes the young guys have made, but six months ago, could you have ever envisioned that you'd have Jay Crawford and Kinsley Fowson out there starting corners? And how much have you seen those guys grow? They're growing, man. They're getting better too. It's just uh, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> But uh, they're 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 definitely growing and getting better. I see it in practice, um, in one on ones, and um, you know, and they're playing against some really good players. You know, they had some good receivers, and thought for the most of the game. Again, they they tip they did some things that last drive that man, and you can go back and see it in the first half that they did it perfectly. But you get tired and the pressure's on and things are moving fast at that moment. And, and man, my alignment's just that much off. And it makes it a difference in the leverage. And um, so you're still seeing some of those things, but there's no question that they're, they're improving for sure. Uh, <clears throat> you kind of touched on it earlier, a little bit of lack of, lack of execution to open up the game offensively. Um, but you guys have struggled to open up the games, especially in conference play. Um, what's what's kind of feeding into those slow struggles? Um, are, are defenses yeah. kind of throwing different looks at you than what you've seen throughout no, the No, not really. I mean, that one there, let's start with what really happened. I mean, we get a penalty on special teams, which we've had too many of those. Offensively, we're like one of the best in the nation at lack of penalties. Special teams, we're not good. and. And it's, it started us on the five-yard line, and we totally MA'd on the first play of the game and take a sack. So you're not going to be aggressive and recover from that on the first drive uh, of the game. I, I'm, I don't care what game I'm coaching in. We're probably not fixing to do something really stupid right there uh, other than try to get us a little field position and, and punt the football. and which we did, and our defense held them, I think, or they missed a field goal or something after that. I can't remember, but um, it wasn't a touchdown. I do know that. So that that's uh, – I can't go back and remember all the other first drives, but that one was a tough one. I mean, you get the penalty that puts you back inside the five, and then you give up a sack the very first play on a quick game, which the ball's coming out or should come out like that. And, I mean, we literally didn't have time to throw it, which means we, we totally uh, MA'd that. Um, so that's what killed the first drive. Hugh, just the, the one catch for Cam on Saturday, but into the end zone, nice throw, nice touchdown. How big was it for him and his confidence to to get into the end zone and, and hopefully build on that for the back half of this season? Yeah, we we've, we need those young guys to keep growing up. You know, Dre is the most mature of that group, the most complete. Uh, we need to get him more touches too. Eleven, uh, Malcolm's doing some good things with with the things we're asking him to do. Uh, Cam, obviously, a deep threat has been proven that he's that. We've got to keep him improving the intermediate part of his game. He really should have had an opportunity for for two other catches, um, and and didn't he did not execute the route properly and. The frustrating thing is, like we were talking to Jason earlier, is just, I mean, these kids are so very talented and they're the future and foundation of our program. And you see them do it in practice. Um, and then the, the bullets get real and things change a little bit. And, the, and they, that coverage is a little different than I experienced against the, the service team in practice. And, um, and I cut this route, you know, two yards short. And... Um, and those things continue to happen some. I mean, we're getting better. Perry's had a couple of really good weeks. So has Bryce. And Malcolm's getting better at understanding things. And obviously Cam's uh, getting getting his, his reps. But we just got to get really a lot more consistent in, in all of the techniques of running those routes. It was announced uh, last week that your, the last two remaining games that had tickets are now sold out. So that's two season mm -hmm. sellouts in, in your first two seasons. What does that support mean? Yeah, man, I can't say enough about the Auburn people. Um, the, the ones that uh, made the trip to Missouri, they'll make it to Kentucky. But then to sell out uh, both uh, our last home games, uh, again, just speaks to the uh, the love and passion they have for this place, the the, the players, their support of the staff, even in difficult times. And 
I know this is uh, this this profession is is one where everybody says win now, win now, win now, and 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 I, I'm sure I'm not on social media, but I'm sure you know the 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 the, the narrative is is always get rid of the guys, get rid of the guys, let's change, let's change. And the, the Auburn people, I know that um, in, in the past, the Auburn fans or Auburn people may have this, this uh, I don't know, this knock that goes against them that they're not really supportive of. I, that has been far from the, the, the case for me and my experience is um, they, they are incredibly supportive and pulling for the next game and the next success and the next opportunity and the next recruiting class and the, and the vision that we've casted um, from Dr. Roberts and, and John Cohen down to me uh, being on the same page and in alignment and from our own to victory folks and everything that's going on in this new college game. I just, I think what Jeff is saying is, is just, I couldn't be more thankful for, um, and the support of the Auburn family. And they continue to prove it over and over again. Coach, you've talked about the pressure, the stress, and it's only going to ratchet up with the games going by and a handful of them left. Not a simple question, I guess, but how do you get to playing freely, and is there a path to being that team that takes that shot uh, again as the season goes on? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And... Um, let me say, I, I may have described it uh, imperfectly, um, sort of like I do a lot of things sometimes. It's, it's not, man, I, I love, I, I don't mind the pressure. I don't mind any of that. I just want to do the right thing for, the, for your kids at the right moment. And, um, and I think it comes down to we've got to gain some confidence in each other and for those moments that are winning moments that w that will will end up giving us the win on the scoreboard, and we've got to find a way to get whether it's the DBs or whether it's a, a, a fresher pass rusher that maybe is really young. We talked about yesterday some guys that hadn't even played a lot yet. Maybe we need to carry them and just on third down, man, uh, tell tell a T.J. Lindsey or a D.J. Reed, man, go sack the quarterback. You know, your fresh legs and they're talented kids. Now you got to manage the 74-man travel roster and all of that. But um, And then me, you know, having confidence, man, Peyton's going to take care of the ball and our receivers are going to run the, the exact right route and, and all of that. And we're at a point in the year where we as coaches should have that fixed. And um, and so I've got to – I've got to – get that and put that in my rear view mirror too as as a as if I'm calling a play man don't don't think the negative hey coach um you mentioned briefly on Kentucky's defense and how solid they've been last week kind of an outlier they allowed almost 200 yards on the ground from your study of that game it, do you believe yeah. that there are going to be opportunities for you to attack on the ground and could this be a big yard <laughs> well game? you know I know coach Stoops he will not be happy with uh, their performance and they will be uh, working on fitting the run this week like they have every other game I mean you, that is a total outlier which uh, it happens in college football you're coaching kids still and um, it's just that hasn't been the case if you go look at the rushing stats against them on all the other teams Georgia included all of them they're, they're not that so I don't make too much of that game. I hope I hope they play like that, <laughs> but uh, it's probably doubtful. I think Lexington at night and the home game for them it, it will probably get their best.